The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. Uh, we're just going to give it a couple more minutes to give a few folks time to get logged in here. Sometimes there's things that need to get loaded and such. So we'll just bear with us for another couple minutes and we will get started very quickly. But for another two minutes, we should be ready to go. Thanks. Hi, everyone. If you're just joining, uh, give us another minute or so. We're just going to let a few more folks get logged in here and we'll get started probably at a couple minutes past the hour. So bear with us. We'll be right with you. So hello everyone, thank you for joining us. We're a couple minutes past the hour. I think we've given enough time for any stragglers to get logged in, so let's get things started. <clears throat> so we're gonna chat today about Sage HR, a new offering from Sage um, being launched in Canada. So we're the lucky recipients to be the first ones to see this. It's a great product, we've had a look at it already, and so we wanted to share it with our customers. So let's just run you through here what the agenda is going to be about, so if we can advance the slide, please. So that's me. Um, I'm uh, Peter Gray Chuck. So back up one more, please. There you go. That's me. I guess you can see me in my camera as well. But I uh, run the sales and marketing for North 49 and probably spoken to a lot of you already. So hopefully you're familiar with me. Uh, can we advance the slide, please? This is, uh, I'm sorry, just a bit of housekeeping before we get to the agenda. So you'll notice on the right hand side of your panel uh, of the screen, you'll see that there's a panel there and there's a question and answer section. If you have any questions as we go throughout the session, please enter them there as opposed to in the chat and we will uh, do our best to answer them. We're going to leave some time at the end for questions and answers and time permitting, we'll try to get to all of those. But if we can't, uh, we will get answers to you before uh, the end of about three days or so. We will record this session so you can have it to refer to later and to share with your colleagues if they couldn't attend. Um, outside of that, we do have everyone muted, so uh, just to avoid any unnecessary background noise. So again, questions, just enter them in the question panel and we'll do our best to get them answered before the end of the session. Next slide, please. So <clears throat> the agenda, we're gonna talk about how things have changed and uh, pretty dramatically over the past couple of years, I guess that's no surprise to anybody. Um, and, and so there's a real, been a, fairly big impact on the whole HR um, managing employee side of things as well. And so we're gonna talk about that uh, and we're gonna see a live presentation of the Sage HR product and how it uh, connects into Sage 300 as well. And then again, uh, time permitting, we will try to answer all of your questions during the session. If not, we'll get to them um, after about three days or so. Next one, please. So we wanna start out with a couple of poll questions. So number one, what are you currently using to, to manage your human resources or your people management? Uh, and I guess, depending upon the size of your organization, this could be a bunch of different things. So <clears throat> we'll leave the poll up there for a few minutes, give everyone a chance to answer the question. And once that's done, we'll move on to the second poll question. I know uh, I don't know if I can speak with our HR folks, but I can probably guess which ones that we're using. I don't deal with that process myself, but... <laughs> A pretty good idea how we're dealing with that ourselves and incidentally we're looking at this um, product for ourselves internally so um, I think it's a great solution that we've seen. 
probably just a couple more seconds and we will close that poll once we get everybody's input. All right, so let's move on to the next poll question. What is the biggest challenge you're facing managing your human resources or your people? I mean, this could be almost anything. So let's pop up our different options here. <clears throat> Whole bunch of different things have sort of come to light, I guess, in recent years, in the past couple of years, has sort of forced many different changes on, on us as employers and as people managers. So um, interesting changes, technology, everything else has sort of uh, been brought to bear on, on how to deal with these things and I think we as, as employers really need to engage with these things to be better I guess better advocates for our for our staff and uh, just better places of employment a couple more minutes and uh, we'll close that poll okay here we go let's move on to the next so <clears throat> The world has changed fairly significantly and, and more so in the past couple of years, but I don't think the pandemic has been the major driving force in this. I think it's been changing uh, fairly steadily and, and probably with a younger workforce coming in and their expectations are quite different. They're very tech savvy and all of us are becoming far more tech savvy, especially in our industry. And more more, more expectations are being put on employee employers, pardon me. Uh, people have flexible work schedules, they work remotely. Um, they work on their mobile devices. So we, we need to be uh, respectful of that, I guess, and provide a working environment for our staff that actually addresses these things if we want to retain our employees. And on, on the side of the employers, you look at how they're managing these things. And uh, if you have an HR department or if it's just a, a task that one of you has to deal with, I think most of us are dealing with this stuff in spreadsheet, but that becomes really problematic because all these disparate things are challenging. You know, when you're a small company, it might be fairly easy to do, but as you start to grow and add more people and add more complexity, like all the things on the left here, uh, it gets more challenging. And you start to spend way too much of your time trying to manage and keep this, this kind of house of cards together. Let me move on to the next slide, please. <clears throat> I don't know if any of you have heard the term about the great resignation, but this is a real issue right now facing employers, uh, particularly in North America. Employees are really reevaluating their place, I guess, and, and, and how they relate to their actual jobs or to their employers. Um, it's a buyer, sorry, yeah, it's a buyer's market as far as, or pardon me, probably a seller's market because employees are now in the driver's seat. There are so many unfulfilled jobs right now uh, that you just can't find people to fill those jobs. And that bottom stat on the left-hand side here is, is fairly shocking. I mean, you're going to see people leaving jobs that they've been into for a long time because now they've started to think differently. Really, the past two years has really caused people to think differently about their work-life balance and that experience. And on the right-hand side, this is the employer side of things. Um, these are the, the issues that are facing these employers right now. So, they need to build these critical skills. Now you have to have process in place that's going to help build these skills in your staff. Um, and, and way too much of their time is being spent doing things manually when they could easily be automated by an application like Sage HR. So rather than spending all your time, you know, messing about on all these disparate and, and not terribly uh, effective applications, you can actually control it much better and, and have a much better experience for your staff uh, using a, an application like Sage HR. Let me move on, please. So there's a bunch of different challenges that are facing, you know, sort of the HR per, uh, profession or or the people management areas of your organization. And, you know, things like onboarding and offboarding, I think some of the most neglected parts of any organization, dealing with these employee relations, how do you keep your staff engaged and motivated? It's not always money. There's other things that that really provide incentive for these people and and all so there's a lot of remote working going on right now so how do you effectively manage that these flexible work schedules of when people aren't in the office all the time i think the days of the nine to five in the office are probably gone um, we're, we're looking at a much more of a hybrid work environment now where people work the hours where they're most productive and it's not necessarily nine to five anymore. Uh, you know, as long as some of that time crosses over during normal business hours when you can engage with customers and other employees, but 
you might find some people are working in the evenings when otherwise they wouldn't be working. So it's a whole different world out there and you need a means to actually manage that effectively to keep your people engaged and motivated. Uh, move on, please. So this is where we introduce AJ. Uh, he is the Sage HR consultant for, for Sage and he's gonna run us through the product itself and uh, show us why it's such a great application. So AJ, take it away. Great, thanks so much, Peter, for the introduction, as well as all the insights and background that you shared, uh, shared on the, the, um, the human resources um, side of things for these organizations that are, are dealing with a few challenges and, and trying to figure out what's the best way to, to get things going uh, on your side. And with that, a uh, quick introduction to myself, customer success consultant here at CJHR. I work specifically on the HR solution here that we'll be presenting today. Uh, I'm working with our customers, existing customers, uh, getting them onboarded, as well as providing um, uh, customer success uh, escalation uh, to ensure that they're using the application to the best of their uh, abilities, uh, taking advantage of all the features, relaying new changes and enhancements that are on their way uh, in our development roadmap as well with our customers. And it's also my uh, uh, opportunity to be able to capture feedback from our customer base across Canada. With that, we have a few slides here before we go into a live demonstration. What I did want to do was start off by recapping some of the poll results that were shared uh, earlier today. So the first question was, what are you currently using for HR management? And let's take a look at the quick responses there. Should be able to see that on the screen. It looks like everyone uh, is currently using Excel spreadsheets. Uh, and that is our, our biggest competitor, Excel, uh, uh, pen and paper. Uh, so happy to be able to look at our existing customer base and see how they've transitioned off of that and been able to automate as well as leverage uh, some of the functionality we have out of our CJHR application. Next, we were looking at uh, what is your biggest HR pain point? And we broke this down based on particular modules uh, and features that are available within Sage HR and how it can potentially help address some uh, challenges that you're having. And so let's take a look at the results there. You should be able to see that there. And uh, uh, wow, this is the first time I've seen this is 100% uh, results are all tied to timesheets and shift management. And that just pertains to the customer base that are uh, uh, responding back uh, on these polls. Uh, their interests are, of course, timesheets and shift management. And this is something that we will take a look at as part of our live demonstration today. And I encourage the questions to come through along in the chat. I have a, a resource taking a look at things that uh, will relay that to us and we'll be happy to answer throughout the demonstration as well uh, towards the end when we do have a Q&A uh, session. So with that, let's take a quick look at what is Sage HR. So if it hasn't already been communicated to you, Sage HR is a cloud-based HR solution, um, providing people management and helping streamline, automating your entire HR process. Uh, it's, as Peter mentioned, uh, giving you opportunities to engage your staff, retain them, and providing some rewarding experiences as well to your staff. It's completely cloud-based, accessible through a web browser, as well as on your mobile devices using a native Apple iOS app or a um, Android app as, as I'm currently using today. Now, why Sage HR? We've outlined uh, a few bullets here on the screen. Um, as I mentioned, cloud-based uh, solution, uh, giving your opportunities to engage, retain, and get the very best out of your staff or potential candidates for your organization. Increasing the work workforce visibility, collaboration, and access to that information. You're not stuck to having to pull out the, 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 the cabinets and the, the hard paper documents that you might be using and having to uh, uh, determine how you can share that with, with others. Everything is all hosted within the cloud-based uh, application. And of course, being able to automate those repetitive tasks, we talk about onboarding new employees, uh, those 10, 15, 20 things that need to be done. Someone in payroll needs to collect some information. Someone in HR has to go through their list of tasks that they have to uh, complete. IT needs to be notified. Managers need to set up things. Uh, all that automation for onboarding not only improves the experience of that new hire or the new uh, uh, person joining your team, but also uh, making sure you're able to save time and money. And of course, last but not least, you're developing a healthy corporate culture, enabling you to retain your top talent. And that's a very big thing that we're seeing with customers today as well. I hate having to mention COVID, but of course, with everyone working remotely, it's an opportunity to engage your staff. With that, we'll take a quick look at a breakdown of our application as far as the different topics and modules you can, you can have access to. Uh, we'll talk in a few moments about our core HR application, the starting point 
of where you would potentially build on and add on different modules. Um, the core HR application has the ability to automate onboarding, offboarding, uh, set up your employees, have give them access to log in and update particular information that you desire for them to be able to, to touch on, view information, uh, as well as uh, a few other things we'll talk about, uh, managing assets, uh, and of course, having access to a mobile device. With that, you also have included in Core HR the leave management functionality. We've identified that that is a um, independent uh, module, but all organizations require that. So we've included that as part of our core HR offering, leave management, which essentially is not having to send an email to your manager to take some time off, not having the manager or someone in HR update spreadsheets with how many days are left, uh, when does it expire, how many days can they carry over, specific rules and, and policies that may be in place for specific leave requests, whether it's um, I think time off for paid leave or unpaid leave, uh, sick leave, uh, various needs, you'd be able to set all that up. And it's my, it'll be my pleasure to demonstrate some of that functionality for us as well. Now, building on that, there's a few add-on modules, performance management, being able to uh, engage your staff, uh, set up one-to-one -one meetings, uh, provide some quick feedback, get 360 feedback from all your staff or any of your team members, as well as their own uh, feedback that they wish to share, setting up an agenda to go through and review the metrics and the details, OKRs, uh, setting up goals with your staff. It's all part of our performance management uh, functionality as well. Shift scheduling, very important uh, uh, for our, our conversation today. So we'll, we'll go into that as well as timesheets. Those are both separate components. Not everyone requires timesheet management uh, or shift scheduling and those are uh, available as add-ons. Expense management, the ability to use your mobile app to, to scan a or take a picture of the receipt, upload it, send it off for approvals as well as get the approval done and have some information available so that that employee can eventually be paid out. And of course, last but not least is recruitment and end-to-end -end pipeline management systems to be able to set up a web, pa web page to uh, post out there for job posting, have candidates navigate to that page, uh, what, which you may share through social media or other sites out there or embed on your web page, uh, have the candidates upload their resume, their cover letter, any other information that you require them to submit when applying formally to your organization, have that information funneled into Sage HR, drag and drop these candidates to various stages, automate the emails that are sent out to engage them, to let them know at what stage they are, to uh, eventually offer the opportunity to have a, a interview, whether it's a phone interview or, or in-person interview or online, and eventually be able to click on a button to hire that individual and move them to onboarding, the onboarding experience. So uh, another module there. And just to wrap it up, these modules and functionality within CHHR are all a modern, intuitive, cloud-based solution. With that, we'll go right into our live demonstration. So what I have here for us is CHHR. This may be the first time that many of you are looking at it. Uh, it is my fictitious Overlook Hotel. Uh, I am the, the CEO here and I'm the manager uh, of all my team, all my staff. Uh, I have full access to everything and I have subscribed to all the topics and modules. So you certainly will see a lot of information on the screen, but be assured that as you're using the application on your end, you might have limited view for each individual team members, managers, staff. You might assign specific individuals to be administrators of the overall application or certain topics and modules, such as the um, timesheet management or um, taking advantage of being able to um, provide information against the OKRs or the goals for performance management, and you certainly are empowered to be able to set that up. What we have on the screen here is my dashboard, my uh, typical page that I'll, I'll navigate to when I'm logged into the application through the web browser. Um, I have various components on here, so I see some tasks that have been assigned. And by the way, um, part of that automation is being able to not only send an email to a, a individual automatically based on a trigger or a workflow, that has been set up by a user in the application, but also potentially add a task to their plate. Let them know that there is a task that has a specific due date uh, and identify whether or not it's been completed or, or outstanding. Um, these tasks can be triggered through the automation for onboarding, for offboarding, for various different needs as well. And we do automatically trigger tasks to managers when someone submits a uh, expense, when someone uh, submits uh, timesheets for approval, uh, as well as a few other areas in the application as well. So a great way to, again, have your staff being able to go in and verify they've completed these tasks that may be assigned to them. 
you can see on my plate, I have a few outstanding tasks here. Uh, I submitted an expense report for myself. So I'll go ahead as the CEO, go ahead and just approve that. Of course, I could go and see the details, the rich information that was provided there if I wanted to, but on my dashboard, quick and easy for me to navigate. Various tasks that are complete will also trigger notifications by email to, um, to the appropriate individual as well. So on this dashboard, just off to the side, I have access to all my modules. As you can see here, we'll run through a few of those. Um, off, on this side here, I have enabled the um, uh, timesheets module, and I've also enabled an option for time clocking, which is essentially the employee logging in through their browser and clocking in and clocking out one or multiple times a day, we'll, which will pre-fill or preload the, the hours uh, against that individual's uh, timesheets for the day. You have that as an option if you'd like to use that. And as well, employees can do that through their mobile device if desired or, or that's of interest to your staff. Um, aside from that, you can also have the timesheets not preload information uh, or preload nine to five with one hour break, uh, eight hours a day, seven and a half hours. You might have all of your staff set up with eight hours standard or a subset have different flex hours uh, as required. And we have a lot of rich configuration options available for that as well. Just as I scroll down here, you'll of course see different things that are uh, visible to me. And as a, um, a user in the system, I can configure what I want to be visible at the top. Uh, perhaps my balance for leave is something I'd like to see ideally at the top. And this is again, that core feature of Sage HR, the ability for an employee to request some time off, see their balance, um, use the mobile app to request their time off as well, and have all that information automated to trigger a notification for someone to approve it, and be able to run some reports. HR would like to see who has taken off time for specific leave policies that have been set up, um, what are the balances, perhaps go in and override and add an additional allotment of time for specific individuals or have it automatically add extra days or hours based on seniority. Uh, um, uh, someone's been working for five years, they get an extra day, you can set that up through the automation as well. And we will touch on that in a few moments as well. So again, my employee or myself, I can see my balance here. And of course, you can rename these to whatever you'd like, have unlimited policies, assign specific policies to specific staff so that they can consume from those days potentially. And I hope that gives you some insights on the dashboard view here. Before we navigate to a few other areas, I'll, I'll highlight that as a uh, manager or as an uh, admin in the application, I can certainly go in and find staff quickly and easily, navigate to their record, and take a look at some information tied to their employee record. Not employees would have access to see everyone's employee record, and that is where you have some flexibility in being able to configure that information. Looking at this page here, specifically my star performer here, Annie Wilkes, um, you'll see the second column here, and that provides additional information there. You can see their employee details, personal information, should you wish to have that available to them, um, upload some documents, have that, available for e-signatures to completely make your, your um, uh, process uh, wire, uh, sorry, uh, paperless. Uh, for that, you do have the ability to send out a, a e-document to be signed by multiple individuals, be able to go into the system, see who signed it, who's not signed it, run some rich reports around that. Just a quick example would be perhaps that onboarding experience that you we, we want to set up. Um, there's a specific uh, IT policy or any other policy that needs to be uh, signed off on rather than using that paper, of course, you can have the system automatically send that out to a new hire, maybe within five days uh, of their uh, new hire date. Uh, they get that email, they fill it out, um, sign it, submit it, it gets recorded back into their employee record and whoever initiated that will get a notification letting them know it's been completed. So just a quick look at this and this, this function of managing documents as well as e-signature capabilities is part of that standard core HR function that we, we talked about here. So of course, being able to see who it's been shared to and you can share to multiple individuals and whether or not it's been completed. That was just a look at that. I, I skimmed over notes, but that is one particular area where you might have some private information that needs to be shared with managers or admins, but not visible by any of the employees. So. Um, um, some complaints that, that were filed perhaps that had some feedback or responses, um, things that you've scanned or upload, need to upload, you can certainly take advantage of the notes section, which is private and not visible by your employees. Asset management, being able to upload a spreadsheet, identify who is uh, being assigned specific hardware or, or other tools within your organization, 
being able to track training that's either been complete, completed or assigned or needs to be uh, um, registered for. And you can see here, um, there's an upcoming training, online security policy for Annie. Uh, she's not completed anything at some point. She can, of course, go in and, and mark it as completed, upload a, a certificate if, if it was required, and all this information now is, is stored as a as part of the repository under Annie's record. We also have this particular area here where you could set up some events that are upcoming and allow staff to go in to sign up for it. And in this case, Annie has registered for the first aid course, which, which is offered on the first Monday of, of every month, uh, and she's reg registered for that. And of course, you'd be able to go in and once it's completed, uh, mark it as, as such. So another component within our, our CJHR application, emergency contact information, as you expect. And when I touch on these tabs here, you'll note that there are specific tabs that the employee has access to. They should be able to go in and update their personal information, whether um, they, they do it on their end or, or someone within the HR admin side, uh, updates that information here. That will of course be saved and you can automatically trigger emails specifically if certain fields are populated or updated. Um, a great way for your staff to be able to provide that insight and information, their updated mailing information, as well as their emergency contact details. Tasks we talked about, onboarding, a series of tasks that get allocated to this individual. As part of the onboarding, uh, when you do have a, a new person being set up on onboarding, there's a, a specific landing page that, get, that they get taken to that outlines all the tasks that they have been assigned as part of their onboarding experience and they need to complete. And eventually, once they're all completed, they'll be handed off to standard application. Um, some of these components here are part of our performance management, one-to-one -one meetings, competencies, OKRs, or goals as, as you might refer to them, setting up development goals and getting some feedback. Again, we won't touch on those in depth, but there are some rich capabilities around performance management. Um, taking a quick look at time off here. Rich function, and, and I, I, I do want to highlight that uh, pretty much all of our, our organizations that are using CJHR take advantage of leave management. Just the automation saves so much time on both the employee side, the manager side, as well as the um, uh, the admin side for, for the HR. And it doesn't look like Annie has a lot of information here. I think for myself, let's take a look at AJ, the CEO has been taking a lot of time off. Let's scroll down here and go right into time off. That information was visible on my dashboard, but I can certainly go in and see some richer details. This particular page will show different information to the administrator and manager versus the employee. I'm looking at it from the point of view of the administrator. I can see some time that I've taken off, some balances. Uh, we have some um, ability to log over time in lieu, if you'd like, to be able to take it off in the future. Again, optional, a lot of rich configuration options available there for organizations that we may wish to take that. Um, you can see, uh, specific balances and we have a rich audit trail of when it was submitted, requested, approved, declined, uh, and potentially when it was canceled in here. You can take off uh, time off policies uh, to be set up for hours or days, uh, multiple days or, or half days uh, if required or desired and all that is all retained within the application for reporting and historical purposes as well. And through some inter other interfaces you'd be able to report across your staff and export that if desired as well. While we're on the screen here, I'll just go ahead and click on this plus icon here. And it's a quick way to add a new time off request for your staff uh, or myself as an admin who may wish to add that in for another employee. And just as you see on the screen here, you can quickly go in and add a new employee, assign a task, or take advantage of some of the other quick add options here. While we're on this page, I'll just go ahead and click on that. And yes, I will take off some time off for holiday. Uh, I think in June, I wanna take some time off one day, multiple day, and this page will, will load differently based on how you've set up that policy. There might be a lead time that they must uh, uh, put in before taking time off. You might suggest that for this specific lead, you need this person to specify who the replacement is for them. Um, you might not allow people to take time off if they've been assigned to a shift, and you can certainly configure it and set that up as well. Multiple days or, or single days, let's try and take a couple days off here in June. I'll quickly just go ahead and submit that and provide any other information here and you have the ability to configure that as well. So I'll do it for myself, uh, AJ here, and I could have set this up to auto approve for myself as the CEO here or a manager, uh, but in my case, it's just been uh, added to the system, potentially my manager, 
uh, we'll get an email notification and then task assign them to go ahead and review that submission. So great end to end process to be able to take time off. With that, I'll take a look at a few other topics around here and just looking at our time, we're at the 30 minute mark and we have uh, uh, some good time, at least 20, 20 minutes to go deeper into our application here. I welcome any questions along the way, feel free to use the chat there to add them in and then we'll have a chance to review them along the way as well. The calendar view, great way for your staff to be able to see who's in the office or who's not going to be uh, there um, across your staff. You can disable this, you can make it so that perhaps only team members within their team can see each other's uh, status or you can hide it and say you'll only see your own calendar view as well. Uh, great thing here is you can also sync this with your own calendar. So at every morning when you log in to your Outlook or your G Gmail, um, whatever email system you're using for calendar, you'll be able to see that synchronized there and know exactly who's going to be off as well. Great, great productivity for uh, uh, some of the executive staff to be able to go in and, and see who's not going to be in the office. Or of course, navigate here and quickly see that, yeah, looks like Don is going to be out on the 16th and we're still waiting on an approval. Of course, yes, you can. Um, hide the policy information here so that you don't necessarily know why is Henry off? Well, Henry's um, um, taking some um, time off for dependency and, and it's personal information that doesn't need to be shared. And you do have that ability to configure that as well. Within our application, you can certainly filter your, your team by, uh, sorry, your staff by teams. You'd be able to set that up as well, as well as locations. If you have multiple locations, you can define that within the application. When it comes to teams, you'll be able to set up number of employees as well as who the manager of that team is and that'll lean us towards looking at the company org chart which is automatically generated within the application based on the data that you're putting in and i'll just take a a, a moment to, to highlight that uh, setting up our application uh, will of course allow you to import a spreadsheet of all that employee information um, identify who the manager is their uh, tenure there uh, what their title is, uh, all that other information can be done. And that is part of our onboarding experience as well. Uh, my role here at, at CJHR is not only um, customer success, but also onboarding. And so I work with other colleagues to onboard our customers. And we typically go through, I wanna say about three one hour sessions to configure the application, work with you through a, a web conference, uh, identify your current processes, identify what change management is required and available for you to set up within CJHR uh, and get you onboarded and get your staff uh, to start either installing the app as well as uh, access the application through the web browser. With that, there's no additional costs for onboarding or the on, uh, uh, ongoing support, which by the way is accessible through live chat. Uh, and what we have here is access to uh, over 450 support articles from the onboarding experience or specific tasks and configuration settings that you might be interested in learning more about end users or employees, as well as your admin staff would have resource access to that. You also have access to our support team, which is North American based, bilingual speaking, um, and available to, to assist. With that, as part of uh, my role or, or my colleagues, we'd be able to provide some escalated uh, support as well. And again, no additional costs around that. With regards to cost, we will touch on that a little later uh, as far as uh, the modules and the breakdown. So with that, I did want to touch on the org chart. I'll open that up for us. And you did notice, you can, of course, upload headshots of your staff to make it a bit more welcoming and, and uh, visually appealing to, to everything here. You can see here I have a few managers that report to me. Annie um, is, is going to get a promotion soon, and certainly she has some staff listed under her within the various groups and departments. And so you do have access to see that. And, of course, drill into the employee to see their data. Your staff potentially have access to see this, but not necessarily see all the rich information that's within their employee record as well. Which by the way, you can log in as different employees to see what they have access to as administrators on your end. So great way to just kind of review what permissions have you enabled and set up for your staff as well. So that was a look at the um, uh, org chart there. Just kind of wrapping up some of the uh, standard functionality within our core application. You also have the ability to track some compensation information, um, salaries, bonuses, pro, um, uh, other other rates that you might want to add it within the, the, the system. It's all going to populate some rich, rich reports as well as dashboards looking at specific individuals as well as the organization as a whole. So another component of uh, the application there. And with that, if I may take a quick moment to look at reporting here, we do have, as I mentioned, a lot of predefined reports and dashboards that are available here. And this is, of course, all based on the data that's being loaded into the system, updated and, and managed 
see uh, last uh, 30 days I've, I've hired one, one team member. Uh, and so this is great for um, HR needs as well as management who might be interested in that. Of course, your employees wouldn't have necessarily, necessarily access to all this information here, but it would be key for um, the administrators as well. Take a look at turnover, um, the breakdown on, on gender, if that was a, of interest, of course, all automatically populated based on what's been loaded into the system there as well. The trends around that. Employee data, you definitely would want to take a look at. Um, actually, I'll go and uh, let's see. I do actually want to go look at time off information here. Perhaps looking at what are the outstanding requests, summarize um, statuses, or just take a look at the individual allowances of what everyone has available at this very moment. Or a snapshot uh, at a past time as well. So great rich information here that's pre predefined, but you certainly have the ability to export that information as well. I didn't touch on it, but your employee information that you have, um, you certainly have the ability to add custom fields. So if there are certain needs that you have on tracking information and making it available for your employees to edit or restrict, you have that uh, capability as well. And that'll allow you to generate some custom reports as well. So with that, I think that covers off uh, what I wanted to touch on for our core functionality. I hope that gave you some insights. What I'd like to do now is because our, our interest was to take a look at timesheets and shift management is to dig into that a little bit. Uh, again, I welcome any questions that are coming along the way. I do see a few there. Uh, I did see that question around cost of implementation and support, which I did answer. Um, notification, email notifications going out to managers when leave requests are submitted. Yes, that is part of the standard uh, function there. Uh, managers will get that notification. As well, administrators can go in and um, override or, or, or choose to approve on behalf of someone else, and that capability is there. Um, there's a question here, can the system send emails when someone changes their personal information? Yes, you could choose to enable some automation on that. So perhaps if someone populates their um, a field that, that identifies that they have a new child or, or such, you'd be able to trigger that to be sent to specific individuals as well. Just as an example, one, one of the ones I love is um, if someone's birth date is, is coming up five days in advance, trigger an email to the manager to let them know we got to organize uh, an event for this individual. Uh, again, it's just one of the examples of the automation that you can define and set up within the application. With that, I'll take a quick look before we go into timesheets and shift management to our settings area. And that's a rich area for administrators to be able to, to take a look at you know, how do they wish to configure the application. I stem away from talking about customizing the application and I tend to use the term configuration. Um, the goal here is being able to take the solution out of the box and configure it to meet as many of your needs as we can. Part of my uh, knowledge that I'll be able to provide as far as uh, onboarding our customers as well, just looking deeper into the time off policies as we talked about, you have the ability to set up unlimited policies, uh, different policies, each having different um, settings. So if I may look at one that I have called holiday for full-time staff, and maybe I'll just call it that way. Um, set up some description that's visible to the employee who's requesting that time off. Identify how it's allocated. I have 120 hours allocated uh, at the um, on April the 1st, my fiscal year perhaps, um, and then potentially it'll carry over up to 30 days of whatever's been banked up to three months later. And you have the ability to configure this. You might say, let's do it by days, not by hours. Um, let's uh, accrue it uh, daily. So give them 0 0.03 days every day at the end of every day, or give them uh, monthly accrual as well. Or you might say, give it to them up front, but they cannot use any of those days until uh, their probation of 90 days or whatever you've defined uh, has passed. And as you can see on this page, I'm, I'm, I won't go into all the details, but a lot of configuration options, and this has been fueled a lot based on the feedback of our customer base. And I'll just take that moment to highlight that Sage HR was acquired by Sage uh, back in 2019. Uh, it's been out there, developed, and used by customers throughout Europe, as well as North America uh, and South Africa today, uh, formerly known as Cake HR, uh, since 2012, I, I want to say. And through that, over the years, We've been including a lot of rich configuration options uh, within the application. And I'd like to say that the application is regularly updated. There's new enhancements and features being uh, made available within the application on a monthly basis. And as part of customer success, my role is to communicate uh, what those new features are, uh, give you the opportunity to take advantage of them, 
enable that configuration, disable it if there's interest, as well as be able to collect that feedback from yourselves as well. So a lot of rich functionality here specifically. I won't go into those details. In fact, I didn't save those changes, but uh, you can see there's configuration options available there. Um, when we take a look eventually at timesheets and shift scheduling, you can certainly set up individuals who might be administrators for that module. I configure how overtime will be handled and, and various needs as well. So I have flagged some people as administrators. They don't have access to everything, but they do have access to configure the timesheet uh, uh, information here within the application. So we do have a lot of rich functionality. This function, semi-monthly, was just introduced this morning uh, based on a lot of feedback that uh, we've been capturing as well. So I'm quite excited for the first time right now to see that on the screen. With that, let's dig into shift scheduling and timesheets. So again, two separate components, and you can define which employees need to access timesheets, which employees need to actually take advantage of being able to get shifts scheduled and assigned to them. Not every employee needs that. And you actually are billed per employee, per module, um, per month, automatically uh, on your credit card. So if you hire 10 more staff and they require access to specific modules, you can go in and set that up and next month you'll get billed for them accordingly. So we'll again, take a look at our, our, our uh, breakdown on pricing in a few moments, but you certainly have access to see that uh, in real time on what your billing will be for the next month. In my case here, again, I'll, I'll highlight, there's a lot of rich configuration options, but in what I have set up here, I've set up a um, weekly timesheet period. Uh, my hours could potentially preload, uh, and let's take a look at just another week here. They might preload nine to um, six, um, logging eight hours a day, one hour off for, for a break, allow the employee, now this is a slightly different view because I am the manager or administrator, but the employee would only be able to see their timesheet based on a period that you've defined. It may preload with hours. You can put this in hours and minutes or uh, a percentage, or, or sorry, a, um, a whole number of an hour, 0.5 hours if, if desired as well. Your staff can go in and potentially, you may enable the clocking functionality. They can clock in multiple times a day and that'll automatically capture the total hours they've, they've logged in here. I may have the ability to go in and edit and override that. You may not allow your staff to do that. By the way, if someone is, um, uh, set up for uh, a shift schedule, which we'll touch on, and they've not clocked in within X number of minutes past their shift schedule, we can uh, trigger an email to the manager to let them know that, hey, we need to get reinforcements in there because there is someone not manning that, that shift. And so, of course, an employee potentially would see that preloaded or have the ability to go in and, and actually add the hours. So for my full-time staff, automatically loads eight hours or, or such, uh, I might go in there and, and adjust that if you configure that too. They can go in and save, they can go in and add some information uh, on what they put in there. And we do have a track of all that history that was there, when it was adjusted, who it was adjusted by, who added some comments, and the comments might be entered by the manager reviewing or approving that information. All in all here, as an employee, I would review and potentially go in and submit it. Um, I don't have the submit button, I've already submitted it, but the approver, the manager, could go in, approve it, decline it, add some information, and eventually that would make its way to the, some, some next steps. So that's a quick look at our um, uh, timesheet functionality. Again, in our settings, you have a, a few more options on how to handle that. Um, by the way, the employee could optionally be given the configuration option to handle their overtime. What do we do with it? Do we want them to get it paid out or do we potentially want to bank it in time and lieu so that they can take time off from that as a, as a leave request? You do have that configuration option as well. Uh, again, I welcome any questions along the way. Uh, and I see there's some questions that might be coming in. Um, so that was a look at timesheets. Transitioning to looking at our scheduling functionality, uh, just to give you a taste of what that could do. Shift scheduling, a few ways you can handle it. You might set up some predefined shifts. Um, I have room cleaning there uh, that have been assigned as CEO here. I've taken on that task. Uh, shift uh, for laundry. Uh, uh, let's see, let's go ahead and add one in here. So today is a 10. Let's go in. Uh, add a shift for the weekend here. Oh, actually, I'm restricted. I, no, I can do that. Yeah. So um, you might have specific shifts that are available or predefined. Actually, I don't know. That. Let's go on into Donna. And you can see Donna has access to specific shifts. This would be potentially the role of a, a team manager to go in here identify what shifts need to be assigned 
Um, these are predefined ones or on the fly. I can go ahead and create a new shift, specify uh, time, uh, breaks, identify what area within your organization there might um, be available there, uh, and potentially save that setup as a shift template to use again if I'd like. Uh, you also have that ability to drag and drop these shifts if you'd like, identify that Bill no longer needs it, we're going to get that to someone else, as well be able to clone these shifts as well. So I can go back in and add it to Bill and have it, oh, actually, I'll do that there. There it is. So I've gone in and, and potentially added one to Bill and Carrie, and, and let's get that off Carrie's plate and give one to, oh, it's overlapping, so I can't do it. So of course, a lot of restrictions are available there. You can configure those as well. So I've, I've put some shifts out there. I've not saved them. I'm just kind of taking a look at what I like, how, how it is, and I can go ahead and publish them. And you can see, I'm gonna publish those. That'll trigger a notification to the employees to let them know that these shifts have been assigned to them and they can work with those. Again, on the configuration side, you might say, allow staff to go in and grab shifts, allow or not allow staff to go in and cancel shifts that they've been assigned to. They might be a process that you wanna go through, allowing them to formally decline those those shifts and you can certainly configure that option as well. So I've assigned some shift, shifts and published them. I don't wanna do this every week. Let's go ahead and clone them across or, or copy that schedule. I can go in and say, yes, copy that schedule to next week's or uh, copy it to specific weeks and, and skip some weeks if, if desired. Let's go ahead and add that in. You certainly have that capability. And with a few clicks, I've done that. And maybe I don't need to copy it for all my employees. I can pick and choose the staff that I want to. I'll go ahead and copy that. It'll tell me exceptions that did not get copied if there was any rules in place there. And of course, I've done that. So now I've assigned those shifts in here. So a great way for you to automate and, and manage shifts within the system. Again, we have a lot of richer functionality around that. That's typically a one hour walkthrough for onboarding, but identifying the current process, processes we uh, support here and being able to help configure that and deploy and roll it out to your staff as well. So that was a look at timesheets and shift scheduling. While we're here, I'm gonna take a step back to our core functionality and touch on announcements. Great interface to be able to showcase as a, as a bulletin board or communicate to your staff, engaging them as well. Uh, notifications and announcements that you may wish to share with them. I have some upcoming return to office information that I wish to share with my staff. I've gone in and added an announcement as a administrator or someone that's been assigned the ability to do that. Um, I've chosen not only to add it as an announcement, but I've also cho chosen to pin it to the top of many different announcements. As well, I've for, uh, asked the systems to trigger an email notification to all my staff so that they know that there's a new boat, a bulletin board posting that's just been put out there. As well as part of the engagement, you have the ability to um, have your staff go in and add some comments, tag individuals, or respond using some emojis if they'd like. So you certainly have that capability. As well as on the admin side, you can take a look at um, who's actually gone in and viewed this specific announcement and when they viewed it. So a great way, again, to engage and, and support your staff and, and being able to get that communication and information out to them as well. So that was a look at announcements. What I'd like to do now is go back into my settings and looking at the timestamp here, we're just nearing towards 12 minutes towards the end of the session. We will reserve some time specifically for some additional questions as well. And within our configuration, I hope I've alluded to and, and identified uh, for you that you certainly have a lot of configuration options available here, digging deeper into the timesheets functionality, not only assigning staff to be um, allocated to use timesheets or identify who are managers or administrators, but also going in deeper into the configuration options. Um, I may wish to track how many hours are classified as overtime um, are they done daily or weekly, potentially, within the application? Um, identifying various groups for pay rates, if desired, as well. Um, and for overtime, giving the option to allow that to be banked. banked. And who can do that? Is it managers or, or staff as well? Time clocking, enabling that option. Again, in, in a uh, configuration that's available within the application as well. A lot of rich capabilities here. Quite exciting to be able to see um, the staff. And I talked about timesheets, being able to break it down, different groups, teams, being able to identify who's part of that and who the managers of those particular um, groups are as well. So with that, I 
do want to ensure we reserve some time around talking a bit more about the um, connection to Sage 300 payroll. That's, that's certainly of interest here. So what I'll do here is display on the screen here. So taking that step here to talk about the um, Sage 300 connector. Of course, customers here are using Sage 300 payroll. Uh, within Sage HR, you have the ability through this connector to be able to send information to Sage 300 payroll. It'll, initially, it will synchronize and identify who those employees are. You'll have some unique tags to be able to compare them. You don't need to re-import your staff within Sage 300 payroll. What it would do is if you have new hires, you'd create them within Sage, Sage HR and you'd expect the synchronization will create them for you in Stage 300 payroll. As well, if employees are going in and updating information, if your organization is going in and managing information there uh, against the employee record, it'll be able to send that out to Stage 300 payroll so that someone in payroll can see, are these employees still active? Have they been terminated? You'd be able to see that automatically, who their, um, who, who are their, uh, sorry, what is their mailing information? Has it changed? You'd be able to see that again in Stage 300. That's what we currently have set up as functionality within the configuration in, in Sage 300 today. The interest is to further develop that this calendar year. The hot, hottest one that we have on the roadmap is being able to support that timesheet information to be automatically uh, visible from within Sage HR and pushed out to payroll. So I do want to highlight that's not currently available, but it is the, the next major milestone for us to be able to, to share within the connection to Sage, Sage 300 payroll. And just while we're here on that, I'll take a quick look at our reports here and specifically timesheet information. You'd not only want to know the number of hours, but whether or not it was submitted and or uh, approved. And if I go into timesheets, there is that particular. Uh, let's take a look at uh, employee timesheets. And you can break it down based on your period as well. But today, potentially, you'd be going into the system, generating some reports, reviewing all that information and being able to download it export it, uh, as well as eventually import it into uh, a payroll system as well. So I hope that gives you some insights. By the way, when it comes to timesheets, if that person, that employee took some time off and it was approved, it will preload that in the information and you'd see specific policies that were consumed on specific dates in the reports as well. Uh, drilling into a few questions here. So with that, I can, um, actually I want to take a quick opportunity here for us to ask another question, if I may. What's your, your current plan for looking at a new HR solution? So I will throw up that as a poll and give you all an opportunity to respond to that. Maybe a time frame that you have and, and looking for a solution, a solution that allows you to take advantage of a lot of functionality all in one place and sync information into your payroll system as well. Uh, being able to get onboarded and, and support your staff, engaging them and moving away from pen and paper or, or spreadsheets. We'll give a few more moments to, to collect some responses on that. And for everyone on this call, of course, you'll have access to this recording um, uh, after the session as well. Welcome you to take the opportunity to share that with the rest of your team. We'll, we'll take a look at a few next steps. Uh, before we wrap up this session. I'm gonna go deeper into the, I'll, I'll close the poll in another few seconds. I'll go deeper into a few of the questions that are being sent along the way. There's a question on, I have here, uh, can we bank vacation days from one year to the next? And, and certainly you do have that ability. You can flag what the carryover period is for that and be able to allow that staff to, to consume it or never cancel it and let it perpetually go over. You might even allow certain staff to have that uh, ability to do so. I'm going to close off the poll here. And so, uh, thanks, by the way, for everyone who did respond to that poll. But yes, you do have the ability to, to define how you wish to handle that within the application. And just continuing on a few of that uh, question there. Um, pricing, actually, we'll take a quick look at that just before uh, I answer a few more questions. Um, another question is, who can we talk to you about more uh, on the app? And uh, can employees use the app for timesheets and shift uh, management? Yes, the, uh, the, uh, the, the web-based solution certainly. Um, oh, sorry, the question was, uh, can we talk more about the app? So the mobile app 
it, it does allow uh, time off requests to be submitted through that. Uh, we do have added functionality coming to be able to submit timesheet information through the phone or the mobile app, not available today. That is a global enhancement that we're making available to all customers across the globe to be able to not have, not only have staff submit it, uh, uh, but I'd be able to review that timesheet information and the shifts within the phone. Today, what you would see is the staff would get notifications in the app, uh, as well as through email that they've been assigned shifts or that timesheet information has been submitted and or updated. Uh, and a question around, can Sage HR help track or manage employee performance? And certainly that is part of the other core, other add-on modules that we have around performance management specifically, being able to set up um, an agenda or create a uh, OKR or a goal for your individuals, your teams, as well as the overall organization and see the progress of that and be able to, to identify through some feedback or as well as self-reporting by the, the individual, how well are they doing or, or have they completed and reached those specific goals by specific milestones as well. Performance management I, I may allude to is uh, a lot of several modules within it. Uh, great opportunity for you to again engage your staff if I quickly go into our settings that would be a, a, a I definitely say a, at least another 30 minute demonstration just on that functionality but performance management has a lot of functions you can configure things and set them up and be able to, to review that in some automated dashboards reports as well as export some summary PDFs that would then be attached automatically to the employee record for reviewing that performance and eventually being able to identify opportunities to improve performance or take it back to their, their salary and compensation and see how you can reward your staff for their performance as well. With that, we're at a few more minutes just to wrap up. I'm going to continue welcoming those questions that are coming along the way. Um, and while we do that, we'll navigate to our webpage here. So if you do access sage.hr, you'll be able to review our, our webpage here, get a lot more information on the product, the topics, the modules, as well as pricing. Everything is broken down per dollar, uh, per module, per employee, per month, uh, and you'd be able to review those details as well. It's quite flexible in being able to add on modules at any given time uh, or disable modules if you like. Uh, we are, uh, you are set up to be able to take advantage of a 30-day free trial. Uh, you will be, um, if you do choose to set that up, you'll be able to be connected directly with me uh, schedule a, a specific one hour session, if you'd like, directly with myself to learn more about your interests, your needs, your pain points, and how that could be potentially configured within the application. Uh, question around onboarding. Um, typically, we offer within a 30 day period um, after going live, uh, after subscribing, uh, the ability to set up about three one hour sessions, such as these, to walk through the configuration of the core application setting up lead management and configuring your, your employee data, getting that imported and launched to your staff. Um, so that tends to be done, I'd like to say within a, a week or two. Uh, everything is pretty self-serve, but we do offer that complimentary onboarding. So I'd like to say in a couple of weeks, you'd be able to get set up, up and running. Now, if you are looking at um, adding on those modules, um, which are of course visible there, performance, shift scheduling, timesheets, that those each would be potentially one more hour session. So as long as you can uh, um, coordinate on your availability, as well as that of, of my team, we tend to say within 30 days, you can be up and running on the full, full package of all components uh, as well. With that, there's no extra charge for engaging new administrators at your staff. It'd be my pleasure to be able to make sure they're successful in their role and get them onboarded in the application walk through some training sessions with them as well. Uh, and then of course, being able to help get the system launched within your organization as well. I hope that gave some, some feedback on, on um, the uh, next steps for yourself uh, and you'll have the ability to book some time directly with me as well. With that, I'll splash on the screen. Just a quick recap of some next steps here. Certainly feel free to take advantage of booking a specific one-on-one -on -one session with myself. Bring on, bring on your HR uh, team, as well as any other individuals that may be interested in seeing how they can take advantage of these topics and modules. We can walk through that in, in an in-depth demonstration and if required, set up some follow-up sessions as well. You may also wanna go and navigate to our webpage to sign yourself up for a, a quick trial. It's actually pretty quick. You just enter in your name, your email address, a few quick details and submit that and you'll immediately have access to your own version of Sage HR where you can start configuring things 
you will see some automated alerts and messages from myself from the system to help get you set up, uh, but certainly have the opportunity to schedule that onboarding uh, as well as a product tour or demo directly with myself as well. And with that, I think we're at the end of our session here. Um, uh, Peter, on our side, uh, I just want to take the opportunity to, to thank everyone for asking some questions, uh, uh, taking the uh, ability to, to review our information. Again, you'll have access to this on a recording, but it's certainly our pleasure, and we look forward to speaking with each of uh, the participants to, to learn more about their needs and next steps and how potentially CGHR can help meet some needs on getting your staff engaged as well as streamlining the process. Peter, any last words on your end? No, just uh, thank you, AJ. I think that was really useful. And I hope uh, everyone who's attending found that useful. And of course, if you want to dig deeper, you know how to get a hold of AJ. There's this calendar right there. You just get to book them. Uh, if you want to scroll to the next slide, AJ, you'll have both of our email address contact information there. Certainly feel free to reach out to me. Uh, we can get you hooked up with AJ if, uh, if you'd like to go through us. And of course, we're here to support you as well as always. Um, I think it's a great application. I love the fact that it's so modular and, and actually once you guys look at the at the cost of it, it's very affordable compared to any other HR solution we've ever seen. And I just love the way it's uh, so modular and easy to set up and configurable and the whole onboarding part is just part of it. So that really makes it great for, uh, for our customers. So thanks again. And uh, if there's any questions we didn't get answered, we'll get answers out to you right away, folks. So Thank you very much. And again, uh, everyone who's been registered uh, for the event will get a copy of that recording uh, in the next few days. Appreciate everyone's time and thank you, AJ. That was very good. Great. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy the day. Bye for now.